In this video, I'm going to be giving you some tips on how to identify pneumothoraces, specifically on chest x-ray. For more educational resources, like our medical ID cards, check out medicalbasics.com. So just a quick overview, we're going to be talking about x-rays, we're going to be showing you some fake outs, and then also how to identify these on CT or how they will look like on CT because they'll be pretty obvious. So the first thing is where do you look for them? And there are going to be three common areas that I specifically look for them. It's going to be depending on whether or not they're supine or whether or not they're upright. So the three areas really is going to be up in the apex, laterally, and in the base. And in order for it to be up in the apex, what you're going to be having the patient do is they're going to be upright, at least 30 degrees or more, because remember air is going to go in the non-dependent fashion. It's going to go where it's going to go by gravity. It's going to go up in the non-dependent way against wherever the body is. So when you're upright, the air is going to go up to the top of your lungs right here. When you're supine, then, and I'll show it to you in a little bit, it's usually going to go down in the base or kind of laterally as well. So what exactly are you looking for? You're looking for a, a sharp pleural line where essentially is a transition from normal lung parenchyma to just open air where, where the chest cavity is. So in this example, this is our pleural lines, very well defined. You can follow it all the way down actually to the base and it has this, you can essentially draw a pencil. You're going to have normal lung parenchyma and you know it's normal because you have all this pulmonary vascularity, all these little thin areas that are kind of branching out. Like tree roots are going to go all the way to the edge of where normal lung may be and then they're going to stop. They're going to stop as soon as you see that pleural line and then it's going to go into just normal, this is just air, air in the chest cavity. And the reason why that's the case is essentially it's going to be more darker, just like normal air would be. Remember, this is outside the chest, right? When they take the x-ray there's gonna be portions that are outside the chest and that's how you know that air is supposed to be black because that's what it looks like and so it's gonna be very similar instead of you shooting an x-ray through lung parenchyma which is gonna be a little bit more white it's gonna be darker it's gonna be darker and that's why you're gonna have that stark contrast so that's an example of a decent sized pneumothorax this is another example where you're going to have a pretty decent sized pneumothorax as well, but I just want to show you, you have that sharp pleural line. You can draw a pencil all the way down to the base. And essentially, you have air within the chest cavity that is fairly decent size, and you have normal lung parenchyma. I can draw all these different roots, all these different lung vascularity that are going all the way out to that pleural line and then they're not going out farther. And so that's helpful because in those situations, they're very obvious, but in other situations, they're not going to be as obvious. This is an example of an apical pneumothorax. It's going to be on our left side. It's going to be much smaller. And this is probably more typical than, than the other situation, or at least it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you to find. So we have this nice sharp pleural line that you can draw a pencil with and you have the pulmonary vascularity. If you're ever wondering, oh, is that the actual pleural line or is it pleural thickening or pleural fat? What exactly is that? Well, the way that you're going to determine that is it is real because one, you see that nice sharp line, but you also see vascularity going all the way up to there, but not elsewhere. So if you look here, you're not going to see any vascularity going farther out. And this is just a zoomed in version. You can see that it, there is no vascularity. There's nothing branching out in this area right here. This is another example, and this is going to be much harder to see. This is probably what we would classify as trace, but oftentimes in the ICU, this is what you're going to see, or we're going to be calling this as radiologists. We're going to say, there's a trace in pneumothorax, and you're going to be wondering, oh, well, I don't even see anything. Well, oftentimes this is how small they can be. And maybe what all you'll see is you're going to be seeing that pleural line. You're going to see some point vascularity going up to it. Right? We can kind of see it. In this example, the way they've windowed it made it so that you can't see it as well, but you can see the pleural line very well. And so that's where you transition from normal lung to abnormal lung. This next case is an example of pneumomediastinum. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because pneumomediastinum is not a pneumothorax. However, it can often be a clue for a pneumothorax. So pneumothorax, pneumo, pneumomediastinum can happen by itself or they can happen in conjunction with pneumothorax. So we always have to be on the radar. Once we see air in the neck or air in the, in the mediastinum, that should trigger something that maybe we, we should look a little bit harder for a pneumothorax. And the concept of how why, why this is the case is what's called the Machen effect. It's essentially what oftentimes happens when people had COVID, at least initially, when people had COVID, their alveoli would burst and so the alveoli when the, the when the alveoli burst which is kind of the distal end of, of your of your bronchi those would burst and air would track along your bronchi or bronchiole into your bronchi and then kind of go up into your mediastinum into your neck so a similar example of that these alveoli could burst as well and then those could also cause a pneumothorax um, you have seen examples maybe of like blebs or bulla that burst is a, a very similar concept that you can have a pneumothorax 
and a pneumoniastinum in, in a similar uh, you know, pathophysiology. So the, the whole point of this is one, when you see pneumomediastinum, oftentimes it's because they had some trauma or maybe they had some surgery. And those two situations, you're going to be wanting to look for a pneumothorax even more carefully. But oftentimes that pneumomediastinum can skew things because you see air up here, you're not entirely sure where it is. It can kind of skew seeing a pneumothorax or not. I alluded to this previously, but essentially this is called a deep sulcus sign. And this is a very abnormal situation. So you're probably not gonna see something quite as advanced, but when a patient is supine, air doesn't necessarily wanna to go to the apex. If it's big enough, they'll wanna to go to the apex, but it's gonna to wanna to go in the most non-dependent way. And the apex is not gonna be when you're lying down. Supine means lying down. It's gonna be wanting to go um, in the more anterior lower segment of, of your lung. And I'll show you an example. This is a CT scan where this is an example of the equivalent of a deep sulcus sign. You don't call it a deep sulcus sign on CT, it's just called pneumothorax, but it's where the air goes. Remember when you're in a CT scan, you're supine, your back is flat on the table. And so air is gonna to want to go in the non-dependent fashion. So that's why we're not seeing air that's going back here. We wanna see air up top. That's why it's anterior and it happens to be in the lower lobe because that's just where you have a bigger, deeper pocket for air to go to. The next thing I wanna talk about quickly is some fake outs. So there's a few things when you think about x-rays of what makes identifying a pneumothorax difficult or not, and this is one of them. So what I'm showing you here is this, there is no pneumothorax here, I'll tell you that first. It's just a fake out. And this may or may not be a good example for it, but if you just looked here, you kind of zoomed in and you only looked at this area right here, you're wondering, oh, is this a pleural line? Is this a pleural line right here? Oh, maybe they have a pneumothorax. Well, no. You have to step back and look globally and see what, what exactly that, that line that you're seeing. You see it and you kind of follow it and you see, oh, actually it's a rib. And that that this is a more obvious example of being normal, but it can often be very difficult to tell whether or not something is rib, whether or not something is clavicle, whether it be the third, second, or first rib, and also the clavicle. When those things overlie each other, oftentimes it can be very difficult. So you have to kind of go back to what the strategy was for looking for pneumothorax. You look for the pulmonary vascularity, and this is true, you can see it go all the way out. So it's, it's not stopping here. It's also not a dark line that I can draw a pencil with that now has you know area of lucency uh, more distal to that. So this is not an example of pneumothorax, but just something that you have to be on the lookout for to be faked out. So the next thing I want to talk about are fake outs. And so this is an example of a normal chest x-ray. But the reason why I want to show you it is because oftentimes you can be faked out by the ribs. You can be faked out by overlying structures. So when, whenever you have the first, second, or third rib overlying with the clavicle or just kind of the way the patient is positioned, sometimes they can look like pneumothoraces. In this example, I probably wouldn't be confused and probably most people wouldn't. But it's just an example of sometimes if you look very zoomed in here, you see this structure right here, oh, it kind of looks like a pleural line, it kind of has that same shape especially, but when you zoom out and you look farther, well, you follow that line, oh, it's actually just the posterior third rib. So oftentimes when you have overlying structures, they can be very confusing and it can kind of make things difficult. The next example, and this is one that I see a lot of people getting into trouble with, especially I'll see an x-ray and then I'll see a follow-up x-ray and now there's a, a chest tube in there and you're wondering, well, how come, they, how come they put a chest tube in there? Well, the reason why is because because oftentimes people mistake these skin folds as pneumothoraces. This example on the left, probably you're not gonna mess up because there's so many of them. There is not gonna be a pneumothorax. There's one on the right though. I could see someone mistaking that as a pneumothorax. And so really what you're looking for, and it may not be as evident in this example, but what you wanna see is one, you wanna see that this skin fold hopefully will go outside of the, outside of the um, chest cavity. So it will kind of extend either up or extend down past the, 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 the actual lung parenchyma. Oftentimes you'll see these in bigger patients or older patients where they have very lax skin. So that's why sometimes you'll just see it kind of go out farther and you know, okay, well, it's extending beyond where the lung would be, so I know it's not a pneumothorax. The other thing that, and it just goes back to the same thing, you wanna look for the lung parenchyma. Is it going extending beyond that quote unquote pleural line? If it is, well then it's not a pneumothorax. And then you have to think, oh, maybe it could be a prominent skin fold, which it is in this situation, bilateral prominent skin folds. The next thing is more of a strategy. And some people find this useful, some people don't, um, and it's inverting the image. Sometimes when you invert the image, which is essentially anything that was white becomes black, and anything that was black becomes white now, it kind of makes things stand 
stand out. So th I actually always do this. I always, in whenever I'm looking for a pneumothorax, I look at first on the uninverted normal image and then I invert it. And sometimes things that I didn't see initially then pop out and become much more obvious. The other thing I use this for sometimes are gonna be for fractures. Sometimes fractures look a lot more obvious when you invert the image. This goes beyond chest x-ray. This is also, you know, when you're looking at the foot, the hand, the, you know, different bones. Sometimes fractures just pop out when you're when you invert the image. Really quickly, I want to just show you, we've seen this example already. What do pneumothoraces look like on CT? Really, it's this black area of air, and you're going to usually have some compressed or atelectatic lung. Um, so this is normal lung parenchyma, or this is technically normal lung parenchyma. This is more of atelectatic lung, which essentially means the lung is compressed. Remember, air is going to take up volume. It's a very fixed cavity, and it's going to compress the lung. The other thing, this patient also has some air, some subcutaneous emphysema. Oftentimes, you'll see that in situations where you have pneumomedia time, pneumothoraces. So that's another tip off, kind of similar to the example I was giving earlier. Maybe this person had some rib fracture, some trauma. That's why they have air in their skin. This is a smaller case, but oftentimes what you'll see, pneumothoraces on CT like to be in three places. One is here up in the lingula, in the base is another area, and then also up in the apex. So kind of similar actually to where you would look for on chest x-ray. But remember, it's not going to be down here posteriorly because in a CT scan, they're supine. So they're on their back. So air, air is going to go in a non-dependent fashion. I'm going to talk really briefly about some of the complications of pneumothoraces, uh, of what you should look for when you're getting these chest x-rays, right? You, you found a, a pneumothorax once, then what should you do when you get follow-up x-rays, especially when you're in the ICU setting? So number one that you're going to be looking for is tension. Two, whether or not there's enlargement or a new uh, pneumothorax, and also whether or not there's a misplaced chest tube. So this first example is an example of tension pneumothorax. So what we see here is essentially the, the mediastinum is being shifted towards the left. Everything is being compressed because there's so much air that's pushing the mediastinum to the left. And the reason why this is important is because you can imagine as things get compressed, the heart gets compressed, you're going to compress on the, the atrium, compress on the ventricles, compress on the vessels, you know, the, the SVC, the IVC, the aorta, those are going to all limit the amount of blood that's going to be passed on to the rest of the body because your, your heart is pumping all the blood, it needs to go somewhere. So the last thing I want to talk about are some of the complications of pneumothoraces or what you should look for when you know the patient has a pneumothorax, what, what should you look for next? So there's four major things that I like to think about. Is there tension? Is it getting bigger, especially when you're getting follow-up? Is, is there a new pneumothorax and is there, is there some type of a misplaced chest tube? These are all things that you need to look for when you're on your ICU rotations or you're working in the ICU. The first thing is going to be tension, right? This is a surgical emergency. Essentially, this needs to be decompressed immediately because the mediastinum is being pushed towards the left. You can see, you can even see it bending towards the left, right? This is the, this is the entire pneumothorax right here. All the this is com compressed lung. So this is the only lung that you're seeing left. I was about to say normal, but it's definitely not normal lung. But this is what the lung is, and this is all air. So the reason why this is important is because when you have compression or or you have tension, you ha are compressing all the structures that are midline, which is going to be your heart, atrium, ventricles, your uh, SVC, IVC, your aorta. Those are all pumping structures. So if you're pressing on those, then they're not going to function properly. You're not going to get blood to the rest of your body. So that's why this is a, a surgical emergency. It needs to be treated immediately. This is what it will look like. And you can see actually the heart is being indented, right? The, the pneumothorax is so great that it's indenting the heart. You can imagine the heart's not going to function well. There's not going to be very much preload that's getting into the right atrium because it's essentially collapsed. So this is not a good situation. The other example that I want to talk about is your chest tube, right? So the chest tube, the, the way they work, and this is just an example of a pigtail. These are not the same chest tubes, but they kind of work in the same way. This is a surgical thoracotomy drain. This is a pigtail catheter that oftentimes IR place. This is what surgeons will place uh, intraoperatively or also in the trauma bay. So this is an example here. A pigtail catheter has various components to it. You're going to have all these different holes, but you also could have a side hole. Same thing with a thoracotomy drain. You'll have, you know, the, the distal end is going to have, which we don't see in this situation, the distal end is going to have where you can suck in, but also it's going to have a side hole. So what you need to make sure is if you see an enlarging pneumothorax, you got to ask yourself why. You know, I have a chest tube in there. Why is it getting bigger? Well, one of the most common things is the chest tube got dislodged. So the side, the side hole, which is where this arrow is pointing to, may be outside of the lung or the pleura, 
pleural space, which is where you want it. You want the, both the side hole as well as the distal ends, distal holes to be within the pleura. And in this situation, it's not. So it, now air is able to leak on the side and now that, that pneumothorax can be bigger. And so in this situation, when you have, you, you would have an air leak that you see bubbles in, in, in your chest tube uh, device. So, you know, this is just another example of, you know, a common complication that needs to be addressed as, as soon as possible. Be sure to check out medicalbasics.com for more educational resources like our HP notebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.